from Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is. Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. I got our telephone number. You got to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Well, well, well. You know, we uh, keep getting these calls. I don't understand it from these uh, aging over the hill broads who. Uh, Try to tell me how to do the program. They tell me what I should say, what I ought to say, what I ought to add, how I ought to make my message what they consider to be more positive or more balanced. This this show is not balanced. Understand. This is not uh, NPR. It's not CBS uh, 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 Evening News. What are they calling it these days? CBS Evening News with Katie Kirk. It's still Katie Kirk, right? Yeah. This is, this is not a news program. Uh, this is me coming on and giving my opinions based on decades of experience. And... I don't know if you looked at the ratings recently, but um, the ratings came out, and we are the number one show in Southern California among men in the afternoon. Number one. We beat every single radio station, all of them, all of them, all. And I think it's pretty arrogant for you amateurs, you amateur vaginas, to be calling in here and telling me how I ought to be doing the program. You don't know about how I ought to be doing the program. I've been doing a show of one kind or another over most of the last 20 years here in Los Angeles. In July, it'll be 20 years since I first went on the air in L.A. And the last thing I need is one of you broads calling in here telling me how to do it. Uh, Or God forbid that I would ever listen to you when you tell me how to do it. I don't need your advice. Call a station with no listeners. Call one of the all sports stations or call my FM and tell them what they ought to do. Somebody should tell them what they ought to do. I'll tell you that. Call that K White over there, K L A N. Call them. Tell them what they ought to do. Don't be telling me what to do. Call one of the stations with lower ratings than I have and give them unsolicited advice. Why do I need you telling me what to do? Why would I listen to you tell me how to do this? Clearly, I know what I'm doing. Clearly, I am ahead of the curve. Without any advice from any outsiders, I've got my tight little team of guys here, and we all work together in the radio factory here. And, uh, well, if these guys have an opinion, I'll listen, because they've been here in the trenches with me. But why would I accept some broad I've never met calling in here telling me how I ought to be doing this? What would make it better? You know, I love those radio stations, especially the ones that just changed their format. We're building a better radio station, and we need your help. (laughs) The fact is, some consultant already decided what the new format's going to be. And they think by giving you the idea that somehow you came up with the dopey idea they're about to implement, (laughs) that you might be more likely to listen to their crappy station. But truth be told, nobody knows what to tell me uh, about how to do this. Nobody. All apologies to Jack Silver. There's not a program director who's been able to tell me what to do. There hasn't been a general manager who's been able to tell me what to do. Oh, they try. But nothing anybody tells me how to do works any better than what I already do. 
PDs waddle in, waddle out, you know, and it's not just uh, here, it's everywhere I've ever been. And along the Tom Likas network, we've had people weigh in on what I ought to do. But uh, look at the results. Number one. That's right, Dean. All the various CEOs of Westwood One, the 13 years I was there, all the presidents of Westwood One. <laughs> oh, yes, they all tried. They all tried. You know, but uh, I'm amazed that uh, that that these rank amateur uh, females call in here and, and start telling me what I ought to do to do better, how I ought to change something I'm doing that has worked so well for me. I mean, I'm a goddamn icon. I am showered with love. I am uh, peppered with calls every day calling me dad and thanking me for what I've done and saying I've saved people's lives. Why would some mouthy bitch who calls in here have any influence on me? I'm the number one show. Number one. you got to be kidding me. Call up one of those other stations that have no listeners. Please. Please. Call that Indy 103. Nobody listens to them. Give them unsolicited advice. They might need it. <laughs> Seriously. Call one of the other stations. Call KRLA. Call any station above 1070 on the dial. No, no. Above 970 on the dial, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Call those stations. Tell them what they ought to do. Don't be calling me and telling me how to do this. I've been doing this my whole life. You think I don't know what I'm doing? I'm number one. I've been on the air in the most competitive market in America. I've been on the air in the market with the most radio revenue. Oh, not the most population, but the most dollars of revenue anywhere in America. And I have survived in the most competitive market for two decades. I'm going to take the word of some mere caller on how to do this? you got to be kidding me, lady. I'm taking your advice on how to do this show. I've done pretty well without you. So unless your name is Johnny K or Dr. Rob Balin or somebody I respect who knows a little bit about the broadcasting business, don't be calling in here telling me what I ought to be doing. Because I'm not going to do what you think I ought to be doing. I'll tell you what, if Johnny K called me and said to change something, I'd change it, I'd change it right now. He called me right now and said, do X differently. I know he knows what he's doing. And I would do what he said. By the way, if you work for Johnny K, I'd do what he tells you. Because he knows what's going on. He knows what's what. Here's somebody who puts numbers on the board. But some caller to a radio... Pro I got the number one show. We got more men than anybody in Southern California. The biggest, most competitive radio market in America. And I've got broads who are not in my target demographic calling in here and telling me what I ought to do. For Christ's sake. You'd think I was doing news out of the box or something. kidding me there's a female targeted for me <laughs> tell you what i mean come on am i wrong tom like it 1-800-5800 tom tom like it 1-800-5800-866 to all those guys out there that are that are knocking these broads up and, and telling them that they love them and, and all of that, you know, these girls don't love you. These girls love the wallet. These girls don't want to have your baby. These girls want to have job security. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Oh, yeah. Let's say hello here to Kelly on the Tom Likas Show. Hi. Hi. 
Um, so I was listening to you talking about the advice that you'd be interested in from other, uh, sorry, DJs, and it made me think how funny it would be to see a debate between you and Dr. Drew, given your dark. What 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 would, what would I want? To, what would I want to debate with Dr. Drew? Just because it'd be funny. It'd be good, you know, good listening, good TV, whichever way you went. I don't understand why. I'm I'm trying to find out why. Why? What? I think it's pretty clear that you guys both view relationships pretty differently, don't you? I, I really don't that. know. I'm not a regular listener. I, I know Drew, okay. and uh, but I'm not a regular listener. How, how do we differ? Well, I mean, I think he's prepared for relationships, whereas you're not. <laughs> you know, I mean, obviously. And so you're, you're both respected radio hosts. But but Drew is Drew is a Drew is a doctor who gives doctor advice. He's not he's not uh, you know a, a an opinionated individual who's looking to get into a pissing match with me. Well, I think you're both interested in ratings and television. Is that not true? We're both interested in what? In good ratings and good television, right? I couldn't care less. I couldn't care less about making good television. I'm not in the television business. You both do radio. I'm just saying it would be fun to watch, so take it for what it's worth. All right. Well, I, I did. I took it for exactly what it was worth. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is James on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, how's it going, Tom? I'm doing great. Hey, uh, I listen to your show, and I don't listen to you much, actually. I just kind of started listening because I'm working up in Hollywood, and I still live in San Diego, but... um. I have to disagree with you on uh, treating women like toilets. I really do. Um, I think that's what's wrong with our youth of our society. I'm 20 year retired military, and uh, many of them act like toilets. Well, you know what? Maybe many of them do, but I think you're Cold, kind of generalizing. Cold, white. Do what? Many of them are like toilets. They're cold. They're white. Yeah, but you know what? You, you got to keep them clean. No, you you, know, you really don't. You flush them out when you're done using them. Yeah, well, let, let's just say my view changed a lot when I've actually gotten my girlfriend pregnant and we're having a baby. Oh, there you but, go. It's something I would never recommend. Well, you know what? I'm 40 years old. I spent 20 years in the service. Stop rationalizing. The Stop rationalizing the F up in your life. You effed up, no, and now you're I trying didn't. to rationalize it. So you no, intentionally, you, know because... you intentionally got her pregnant, did you? No, I did not. That's my point. So now That's, you're trying you know, to rationalize the mistake you made. No, it's not a mistake, Tom. How do you know? Because if you play the game and you take that chance, these things happen. It doesn't mean it's not a mistake. I'll tell you what, if I if I, if I play the game, no, you, I, you you can step up. You will pay for the abortion. That's what I do. That's, That's, That's what, what I recommend society, the guys Tom. do. Our society is always looking for the easy way out. I, again, always. again, I don't see why life has to be any harder than it is. It's not hard, especially when you're proud. And how you're do you know? How do you know? How, how old is your kid? How old is my kid? Yeah. Five, uh, minus five months. That's my point. You have no idea how hard it is. You have no idea. Well, you know what? I've seen people die. I've shot people. I've been all around the world. You still have no and, idea how hard you know it is. I've seen hard. I've seen you hard. still have no idea how hard having a kid is and how much responsibility it is. You have no idea. But I'm not being an ostrich and burying my head in the sand either. I'm not being when I when I had four different women have abortions. I wasn't burying my head in the sand. I was dealing with it head on. You were t taking the easy way out. No, I. T well, but first of all, why would I want to take the hard way out? Why is it hard? What would be the you point of taking the hard way? Because it is costly. It is time consuming. It is responsibility that I don't need. I like my life the way it is. Okay, that's good for you. But what about for somebody like me? We're not you. You you were talking about me. Now you're zigzagging and talking about you. You screwed up, and now you limit. screwed up, and now you're trying to rationalize it. But see, you're telling me that I screwed up. You did screw up. Uh, that's your opinion. You're going to find out when the kid is born. I disagree with you. Okay, fine. I believe I'll be the happiest man on earth. How do you? Well, then why didn't you intentionally have a kid? Uh. We weren't married yet. We hadn't planned on it. Oh, uh, I see. Why weren't you using a condom? Because I wasn't. Yeah, because I wasn't. Good answer. 1-800-5800-TOM. Jason on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Dad. How's it going? I'm doing okay, son. Uh, first time, long time. I got to say, you know, I drive every day and I listen to you every day. And, uh, you know, it's people like that lady that just called in. It, it, it blows my mind. 
you know, they don't understand. A lot of people don't understand that, you know, whether or not we 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 decide to use what you you give us as a tool. Um, I did. I did it for uh, two years, and I loved it, man. You, you you pull it all the time. It doesn't matter. But you're looking for a certain type of woman. You know what type of a woman's going to give you what you're looking for for the night. You know, right. you're, and they're they're easy to read, and it goes that way. You know, and when we li- and when I listened to you, I, I picked up what I needed to. I got uh, you know how to deal with them, how to um, manage that, and and be smart about it, and get rid of them the next morning. You know. They don't understand that, you know, we don't listen to this and, uh, you know, apply it to all the time. You know, it's, it's you know, constantly going. They just don't get it, you know. Well, I, I obviously that's true. And then they they think that I should change the show and make it, approve, make it appeal to all of the uh, females out there who are angry about the stuff I say. Yeah. And, and the show is not aimed at women. It's aimed at men. Men. Exactly. Now, if women want to tune in, that's fantastic, and we're happy to have them call in and participate. Yeah. But the reason the show is so successful is because we are unapologetic about wanting to appeal to guys. Well, it, it, it gives me a peace of mind at the end of my my long work day. You know, the last thing I want to do is want to go home and deal with some bitch, you know. And, and if I do, then I do. But you know what? During that hour or two hours that I'm listening to you, that's my getaway. You know, I get to sit there and listen to you and, and, and listen to the fact that you make right. You know, and, 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 hey, that's my release, you know, and people, people like that just don't understand it. It's, it's an entertainment value more than anything, you know, and it's, and it does exactly what it needs to. Like I said, uh, I, I recommend you to, you know, all the guys I know, the younger kids, the younger guys that I know, hey, you know what? You're too young for a relationship. You don't need to be messing with that, that, that stuff. You know, it doesn't, doesn't do you any good right now, man. Go out and have a good time, you know, and, 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 and get rid of them. You know, you don't need to be hanging on to them. And and when they get mad, when when you get callers that get all frustrated about you, you know, it's like, hey, you know what? You're doing your job, and and you create something that I want to tune into every day. You know, and and that, that that's my job, for God's sake. By the way, a listener in Australia just sent me, and I'm not going to read the whole article. I'll just read you a little piece of it. <laughs> uh, apparently. Some bland individual who does some bland morning chit-chat show in Australia came to uh, L.A. during Christmas and uh, turned on the radio and see if you can guess what radio station or what show he might be talking about here. Listen to this. This is somebody named Steve Price. Driving through Los Angeles at Christmas time with the children in the back of the hire car. Is that a limo? Taxi? I don't know. I happened upon a talk radio station devoted to the hatred of women. (laughs) No kidding. The male presenters on the station were recruited because of their distrust of women, their fear of marriage, and concerns that all women were trying to rip all men off and take their assets distasteful and crass, aimed at men aged between 25 and 45 with wrecked marriages behind them. It's apparently quite successful. (laughs) I had to turn it off when the morning presenter urged a female lawyer he had to run in with to go out and kill herself. Maybe, maybe, son, maybe you just ought to stay there in Australia, okay, where everybody's very polite on the radio. They don't call them talk shows, they call them chat shows. You can sit there and chit-chat with everybody. (laughs) Just go back, the girly man that you are. Go back to Australia. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Cindy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. First of all, I totally agree with you about children, and I think there should be a one-year law where there can be no babies born, and then we can see what happens after that. There's just way too many people on the freeway right now. But my question for you was, you stated that you've been married four times, and I was just wondering why you got married the three other times. Because I was an idiot. I I, I have said on the air many times, uh, because my parents were married until the day my dad died, my parents were married 40 years I thought it was me screwing up, oh. and I finally realized it wasn't me. It was the institution of marriage. 
Yeah, I just you said that um, you learned after you know when you and that lady were having the um, debate there when she was trying to tell you how to run your show. And I know I'm not in your demographics. I'm 44, never been married, no kids, so I sort of sound like the 20 year old male on your show, but. Mm-hmm. I just was curious because I heard you the other day, and I'm a new listener, so I don't know all that much about you. And I thought, well, why did he keep getting married? Yeah, so. yeah, because all, that's all I saw. My parents were married all those years, and I thought, well, my God, I did something wrong. And I agree with you. You have a, a successful program. You're making a lot of money. Why would you want to change it for anybody? That's right. Good job. Thank you for my answering my question. Thank you, Cindy. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Dave on the Tom Like You Show. Hello. How you doing? How you doing, Tom? I'm okay, Dave. Uh, the reason why I was calling is about that uh, older woman who called to criticize you for how you run the show. Hello. Which, which she forgot to mention is how about when you influence us to go to school and continue in college? Or to use a condom. Exactly. Or... To make certain other decisions when it comes down to it, she only brought up all of the negative, or as far as for from a female's point of view. But what, as far as everything else goes, she was so silent when it comes to that. I googled you and I saw that you been married four times and divorced four times. <laughs> That's all she would bring up. But like I said, you don't. Have, you- by the way, you don't have to Google me to find that out. I tell you that every day. Exactly. You got nothing to hide, Tom. Everything's right in front of us. That's right. And that's, what, and that's what we respect about you the most. You know, us us listeners, we respect you because there's nothing to hide. If you Google you, everything you say on the air is everything that's that's coming up on the Internet. That's so what's really- there. I love these people who call up and go, I Googled you. And do you know what I found out? I found out that you hate women. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank well, you. Tom, that's all I wanted to mention. Can you uh, take me out Kobe style? I certainly can, Dave. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. You're a beast in my heart. Oh. You're there, I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, let's check in again. Uh, jo- Joe Cipriano, uh, our announcer. Uh, you know, as he's, yeah, we, we have him featured on our HD3 channel at our flagship station, 97.1 KLSX. Uh, a look behind the scenes. He's been rehearsing in his studio all day. Uh, he's been, uh, practicing up on all of our material, and I guess he's been, uh, ramping up to do some, uh, is this Cinco de Mayo material he's working on here? Right, let's, let, we're listening in on Joe at work. He does not know we're listening in on him, but, uh, let's listen in on Joe Cipriano as he prepares. It's Cinco de Mayo. From Camacho's in the City of Industry, it's Cinco de Mayo. From Camacho's in the City of Industry, it's Cinco de Mayo. Different inflections. From Camacho's in the City of Industry, it's Cinco de Mayo. From Camacho's in the City of Industry, it's Cinco de Mayo. Ah. From Camacho's in the city of industry. This is the hardest working man in show business. Cinco de Mayo. Look at that. From Camacho's in the city of industry. I don't know how he does it. Cinco de Mayo. He sits in that little room. From Camacho's in the city of industry. All day. It's Cinco de Mayo. Wow. (laughs) 1-800-5800, Tom. That... That angry old broad who called in here earlier apparently is calling Dean back over and over and over now. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. This is Ezekiel on the Tom Like You Show. Nice biblical name there. Hello. <laughs> hey Tom. I like your bread, by the way. Long time listener. Thank You're you. my dad, man. I love you. Thank you. I love your show. And the women that get pissed off at it, it's because they hate hearing the, the, the damn truth about everything. That's right. And, you know, it's like, let me tell you something, man. Uh, the, people are going to recognize this because it's happened before, because I've been on your show before. And whenever I say I'm a screenwriter, they automatically know who Ezekiel is because I'm very well known in the business, right? Yeah. 
And so I, I'm, I'll say that on the air again, women, when I go out with a chick, man, they want to go out and they expect these big elaborate dinners and all this stuff. You know what I do? You say your $40 rule. I got the one dollar rule. I don't pay for nothing. <laughs> I don't pay for nothing. They think they're rad because they're going out with a screenwriter and they want me to pay for everything. No way, McGay. Never. <laughs> and you know what? And I still get what I want. By the way, a screenwriter is one of the occupations I tell guys to lie about all the time in L.A. <laughs> to get late. And you know what? It's like you know. But I, I think what you, when you say to guys that they should concentrate on their careers and all that stuff, it's very important that they do. You know, it's like you know, I, you know, I, I, I decided to make my own independent movie. You know, I have a, a, a high-powered agent manager, and so I went off and made my film. And, and you know, now that I can go out and say, yeah, now I'm a director. My movies in post-production and all this stuff. Guess what? I don't got to pay for nothing because you know what? They want to be around the guy. That's that right. The dough. They want to be around money, power, and fame. That's exactly. what they want. And, and you don't have to pay for it. And dumb guys go out and they pay for, you know, a very expensive dinner. And what do they get? A hug? Not only that. They say things like, well, I'm in construction. <laughs> you know, and uh, it's pretty good. Sometimes I make $90 an hour. Sometimes I'm out of work. No, what does that Whoa. mean? <laughs> <laughs> I think you're doing a great job. I've been listening to you for years, and I really hope that just both guys and girls are listening to what you're saying because I think girls don't get it, and some dudes really don't get it. I, I think you're right about that. Uh, 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Yo, amigo. Come join the party of the year on Cinco de Mayo. Broadcast live from Camachos in the city of industry. For details, go to blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likes Show. Yes. The Tom Likes Show coming to you from Hollywood, California. I want 800 tom this is Annie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Is that a question or a statement? I'm sorry. I, didn't, I couldn't hear that you were even asking, talking to me. I, I do have a question. I was curious if you were calling women human toilets. Are you asking me if I did? I, I heard you. I was just wondering why. Because I think uh, men should not fall in love with a urinal. I think they should do their business and then towel off and then uh, get back in the car and drive off. So is that how your father should have treated your mother? Again, we're not talking about people getting married or people who are married. We're talking about people who are dating. Who are dating? Yes. Okay, so what... what you're automatically a human toilet if you're dating someone. I mean, isn't that well? You're really the equivalent if you think about it, because most men just want to bang you. Okay, and maybe most women want to bang men, but that doesn't mean we call them toilets. Well, it doesn't matter. And you, now you're talking about what we should call you and what's politically correct. I'm just being honest. I don't think calling anybody a human toilet is honest, first of all. Well, if I come in, do my business, and then get the hell out of there, it's very much like using a urinal. Oh, that's a, there's a big difference between making love to someone or having sex with someone. Well, we don't, we don't make, our guys don't make love to anybody. Why, are they afraid of it? No, we have sex. And why, why don't they make love to anyone? Because we have sex. <laughs> Have Making ever, love uh, is what you call it in order that you don't get uh, sick and throw up when a guy is banging you. Wow. Well, as it turns out, I was happened to be in the car with my 16-year-old daughter when this program was on. And I was sitting there saying to her, I cannot believe this guy is calling women human toilets uh, on the air. And do you know what she said to me? What? She said, he's obviously been very hurt by someone. Someone probably cheated on that guy, and he's really Well, hurt. the reality is that anyone with a penis has been hurt by a woman at some point or another. Well, don't you think any person without a penis has been hurt? I don't know or care, okay, because this is a show by men, about men, for men. So then why are you even talking to a woman? You're welcome to call. You're welcome to find out how men think. 
and we're happy to have you learn that. But when we do the show, it is intended for men. Do you really do you really believe that all men think the way you think? I never use the word all, but most men do. Most men think that women are human toilets. Yes, we we want to uh, uh, make our deposit, then uh, blow out of there. Well, do you think that? Do you think it would be appropriate for someone to say that about your sister on a date? Uh, if if it's appropriate, it's only appropriate if it's true. And it's it's true unless. I'm telling you, that's how men generally feel. Well, wh what would make it not true? If it wasn't true, then it but would be not true. But what? What would be the? De why is it? You know, just a human toilet for some people and not for others. What so, would some men are delusional; they haven't learned their lesson yet. Oh, so if a man goes into it innocently and is thinking about falling in love, then it's not. Most true? of them find out the hard way. Yes. So you really have been hurt. Again, everybody with a penis has been hurt. Wow. So you were married four times. I heard the lady saying that today. Were you in love any one of those oh, four times? Oh, of course I was. What a fool I was. Oh, Tom. <laughs> That's sad. I'm the happiest I've ever been in my entire life. Were you ever happy on the day you got married? Not like I am now. Really, truly? Really, truly. Well, I have to tell you, I'm I'm not married anymore, and I'm very, very happy not being married. There you go. But, but I will say, I was happy being married, too. Fine, but you're happy not being married, and so am I. Well, I just, I, having said that, and, I, and I'll be honest with you, my marriage ended with my husband having an affair, but I still don't think of every man as... Every man is a cheater, and I don't. I would. I don't have that need to just think. I don't I think of every woman as a bitch. Well, you are a human toilet. Uh, for my purposes, that's what they are. Wow. Because wow. I just want to get laid. Aren't you glad I'm honest about it? I mean, if you ever met me, you know that that is my one and only interest in you. Aren't you glad you know that? <laughs> If that's is it be, is it because you really don't want to ever um, you don't ever want to meet anybody and settle down with somebody again? No. Uh huh. So okay, well, I mean, you know, that's that's your story, and and I understand that. But I, honestly, I'll just tell you how it sounded. And we don't know you. I've never heard your show before. I only was exposed to it for that little few minutes when that lady was talking to you. And you just sounded to me like a man who um, was really... Well, you've already said this, and we don't allow the constant repetition of material, so we're going to move on. Clearly, you've run out of material, and now until it's it's like radio euthanasia, I have to put the call out of its misery, because if I don't, you're going to keep saying that I sound like a man who's been hurt by women, which you've already said time and time and time again. Now, Dean says this woman has called at least four times since she was on the air. We never put people back on the air, but why are you calling back? We were done with you. No, because I'm just kind of blown away. You you, you go, what? You go to the right, but here, Tom. I go to the right? To the left, you go to the right. Okay. I go to the left. I, I, again. Tom, please. Can why I are you calling back? You already had 10 minutes of air time. I, I wanted, That's I more than enough. Tom, your guy put me on. He put you on. That doesn't mean I have to spend any time with you. I'm just trying to find out why in the world you would think I would want to talk to you again. Uh, I have a proposition. I don't need a uh, Unless the proposition involves you getting down on your knees, I'm not interested. Then I guess your guy did the wrong thing. I, have I guess he did. Not getting on my knees, but I have a proposition, a sexual proposition. You ready? Does it involve you? Well, of course. What is your proposition? My proposition is, Tom, where do you live? You live in the Hollywood. I'm in South Orange County. You come down here. We go at it. And I would love to whisper in your ear what I believe younger men need to hear.
Oh, you want to wait? But that's after I've had my way with you. Is that right? Well, of course. Of course. So yes. you are so anxious to have a conversation with me, you are willing oh, to put out. Tom, after I had my way with you. Oh, so you want me. My way is, you know, it's, it's my way, not your way. It's my way. Oh, <laughs> I beg to differ. I'm the mom with the big microphone. Uh, do you have the big... Well, darling, you'll, you'll only find out when I give it to you uh, good and hard. Okay, well then, are you ready to step up to the plate? <laughs> Look at this. Bring it down. Bring it on down. All right, all right, I'm coming down. I'm coming down. Yeah, I'll be down there. <laughs> what do I say about that? First, this woman is, is shower. And by the way, isn't this what I always say? They always start off telling me how wrong I am and how much they hate me. This woman's already got her clothes off. She's standing by the door there in Costa Mesa, wherever she is. She's down there in Rancho Santa Margarita, wrapped in saran wrap at the front door. Holy cow. Dean's still talking to her out there. <laughs> Sauce her out, Dean. Get her to send a photo. Get her to use her cell phone instead of photo. Put it up on the MySpace page. We'll see what people think of that. Holy cow. Hey, Gina, did you hear that? Gina? Yeah, I heard that. She's, she is so pathetic. It's sad. And it's like... She's got to be like forty something saddlebag. Is my open my open palm, and it's ready for you. It's got your name on it, and, and people think I'm just joking. I'm telling you, the ones who are the angriest are the ones who want me to crack their ass. I know. You know, it's like they're always bugging you about having kids. It's like you don't want them good for you. Why would you want a man that doesn't want to have kids to have them? Are you dumb? You know, and it's like, this lady's like, I Googled you, and don't you're going to die alone? Aren't you scared? Yeah, I want to die alone with my millions. Why do I want to give them away? <laughs> you retard. You know, nowadays your kids kill you. It's like, hello, and now she's throwing herself at you like you even want her. You're a, you're a millionaire. You need a girl like me. <laughs> <laughs> a beautiful 26-year-old that looks like a 16-year-old with a body of a goddess. You know, really? Bags, Is that so? Oh, yeah. I'm the Cuban mommy and all that stuff. She said about, oh, Hispanic people are dumb and stuff. You know what? It's women like her. That is why white men come to us, honey, because she's <laughs> annoying. That's Nobody right. Wants to do that. What is she going to do? Talk while, hey, I'm going to tell you what you want to hear. Hey, roll my fatness. Hey, touch my fat breast. Well, and you heard what I said earlier. I said American women are like human toilets. They're white and cold. You know, it's like she's just so sad. She can't. She's she's talking about us being uneducated. Look at her. She's so uneducated that she didn't know what to tell you that she threw herself at you. You know, come over, Tom, and watch. I'm going to show you. What are you going to show him? A donut? Snap <laughs> oh out of it, you know? It's like for real. It's like I love you, Tom. I listen to you every day. My daughter listens to you. She's five. You know, I, I let her know, look, listen to this. You know, it's like a, a lot of my friends tell me, oh, why do you let her listen to him? I go, because he is actually saying something that should be said. You know, women are evil. A lot of my friends have gotten men pregnant, and then they don't want to be with them. Then I'm going to get you for child support. And I tell them that is so scandalous. How dare you do something like that? You know, women are evil. If you piss me off, I'm going to do an evil deed to you. You know, it's like we are evil, but we're not all evil. But, you know, you have Google lady that some are dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Gina, thank you for that. Our email address is my name, Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.